Hello, my name is Howard Milano and today I'm going to show you another implementation of a crank slider quick return mechanism. I previously made a tutorial video about uh, another crank slider quick return mechanism that uses a connector. This one doesn't use the connector, it is instead a single arm with two slots and the slider and the disc. It looks like this in the animation. So it's a rotary movement, a crank that drives a horizontal linear movement with a quick return when the knob on this disc is at the bottom. Alright, let's see how we do this in FreeCAD. So let's look at the variables. So we have angle that drives the disc. When we drive it, the animation, we need angle. Base distance is from the center of the disc to the base. This is the base here. Base distance. Disc pivot radius from the center of the disc to that knob there. I call it a uh, pivot. Disc pivot radius. Disc radius is the radius of the disc itself. Part height, all the parts have a certain height. Uh, the same height really. Pivot radius, those little knobs are called pivots and they have a radius. Slider height, here's the slider. The height is from the slider to the base, that's slider height. Slider length, length of the slider. Slot 1 length, that is the big slot. Slot 2 length, that's the little slot. And slot arm length is the whole arm. So some of them is fixed numbers, other ones are defined as something else. When you make an animation like this in the model, you have to sort of mess with the variables till it looks good and the model itself actually works correctly. So, base distance. Let's look at the ones that are defined as something else. This pivot radius plus 40. So that's the, the base distance. Disk radius, a little bit bigger than disk pivot radius. Slider height. Slot arm length plus minus pivot radius times 10. So that's this height. Slider length, the length of the slider. I mean, we were there already. Slot length. Uh, base distance plus this pivot radius. So that is the length of that big slot. And slot 2 length is pivot radius times 12. And then slot arm length itself, the whole slot arm. Slot 1 length, slot 2 length, plus pivot radius times 8. Alright. Let's hide them for a second. Let's look at the parts. So the disc with the knob that they call the pivot right over there and every part has a height. The base, that's where the slot arm is anchored at the very bottom. Slider itself has a pivot, a knob in the middle. And slot arm, this is where it connects to the base, it's anchored in the two slots. We don't use local coordinate system origin. Master sketch. Here is the center of the disc. Here is the knob on the disc. That thing is the slot arm and this first pivot slides up and down in the big slot and this pivot over here slides up and down in the smaller slot. And here is the slider, fixed length. It's horizontally constrained. Certain height from the base. The center of the disc is a certain height from the base. So you can see slot arm, you don't see any, that's not fixed. Everything is moving. The pivots are moving on slot arm in the slots. Okay, let's take a look when we get it running. So you can just have to visualize 
one of these pivots here sliding in the big slot and this top pivot sliding in the little slots and then the slider going back and forth. All right. Let's look at the um, local coordinate system. So we have a local coordinate system for the base. It's hooked. This is where the base is located. It's a translation of the origin. Slot arm is hooked up in the same place, but it has its own local coordinate system because it's gonna. It's hooked up to the edge, so it can swing around. So this vertex three that is right there with the edge two. The disk is right over there and it is hooked up to this edge here so we can rotate it. And then we have the slider and it hooks right there with this uh, edge. So now all you have to do is add the parts to the assembly using the local coordinate system. So that's when it looks like this then. Let's hide that one slider and hide the master sketch. Set it up right, okay. And then we can make it run using angle. All right, so we have the rotary movement that translates with the slot arm with two slots into an horizontal linear movement with a quick return when we reach the bottom of the disc here. That moves the slider back really quickly. All right, hope this helps. Thanks for watching.